1966, Chaz Chandler of the Animals uh, decided he'd had enough of being in the band. He sold his bass guitars and he took that money uh, to buy a first class plane ticket to bring in an unknown American guitarist called Jimi Hendrix from New York to London and launch his career there. He, Hendrix wasn't the only person making that kind of reverse journey in the middle of the 60s. A year earlier, the Walker brothers, Scott Walker and the Walker brothers, had to come from Los Angeles to London to do something similar. Shall launch themselves very successfully as a, as a pop trio. Why did they do this? Well, American acts felt that they might get a fairer shake in the UK and it was a smaller scene. And they also felt that if they made it in the UK, they could return to America with some of that magical swinging London fairy dust sprinkled over them, and that would do them no harm whatsoever. There was a further reason with Jimi Hendrix why Chas Chandler would bring him to London. London at that point was already Guitar Hero Central, and uh, this is something that you can probably uh, blame, if you like, on the previous year's record, uh, John Mayles Blues Breakers, in which Eric Clapton, reading the Beano there, was so clearly the featured player. The cult of the guitar hero is a very odd thing in two respects. There are no saxophone heroes, there are no piano heroes, there are no drum heroes, but there are guitar heroes. And uh, there is something about the sight of... Uh, certainly at the time, of certain young males with an electric guitar that speaks to the depths of generations of young men in the audience. And I'm sure Freud, had he been around at the time, would have had a field day about the fact that the appeal is not just musical, it's also vaguely homoerotic. Actually, the additional factor about guitar heroes, those original guitar heroes who went on to influence musicians all over the world, was that they all were all born round about the same time, and they were all born in round about the same place. They were all born in the suburbs of London during the 1940s. So we're talking about, obviously we're talking about Eric Clapton, we're talking about Peter Green, we're later talking about, about Mick Taylor, Jeff Beck, and probably most significantly of all, Jimmy Page. Uh, Jimmy Page it was who went to the United States with the Yardbirds. And the experience of going to the United States and playing in front of very different audiences really turned the heads around of all these musicians. Because for the first time, they were looking down in the audience, they were seeing not people who wished to dance to the latest hits, uh, and not girls who wish to squee scream, but uh, rather intense, rather serious-looking young men, overwhelmingly young men, who sat very often cross-legged on the floor and looked up at them on the stage with an, exp an expression of wide-eyed awe all over their faces. And what they seemed to be imploring these people to do was to be more and more impressive. They wish to be impressed. They wish to be rolled over by sensation. And probably the person who did that most successfully subsequently was Jimmy Page with Led Zeppelin. So there's the guitar hero, made in England, but made for the United States. If you've ordered my book, either online or via your local bookshop, Please get in touch with me via the email underneath this and send me your address and I'll be happy to send you a signed, customised book plate that you can put inside it. Thanks very much.